Because that's what we're talking about today. The spirit of wisdom and understanding. There's only one source for it. You'll find that out today. Because if you get it from the world, you're surely going to be confused. Yes. But when we're talking about our hearts today, when the Holy Spirit speaks to you, we really need to have ears to hear. That's all I heard the other morning was the spirit of wisdom and understanding. But to receive that from God, you must, like we're saying today, purify my heart, O oh God. We, we really need a pure heart. You don't need to go there. In Jeremiah 29, 13, it says, And you will seek me and find me when you search for me with all of your heart, not some of it. Proverbs 8, 17. He's talking about wisdom. Read that Proverbs 8. It's all about wisdom. It's all about who Jesus was in the beginning. And it says, in 8.17, it says, I love those who love me, and those who seek me diligently will find me. And he's actually referring to wisdom in that verse right there, that whole section of Proverbs 8. And then in Matthew 5.8, it says, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. <coughs> the problem is in Hebrews 4.12, it says, God knows the thoughts and the intent of your heart. So if you're seeking God with a pure heart, don't think you can fool Him. You cannot and will not fool God. He lives inside your heart. Amen. So if you go to God, oh God, my heart's pure before you. I need this, this, and this, and I want more wisdom, and I want da 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 He's not even going to speak to you. He'll say, come back to me when your heart's been purified. Amen. Because a pure heart is a heart that loves God above all else. A pure heart has been refined with Holy Ghost fire. A pure heart knows that in and of themselves they have nothing good but Christ alone, the hope of glory. See, you don't put that goodness on yourself. We're just saying how good He is today. Bringing people to tears in here because God is so good. He is so merciful. He is so compassionate. So we need to really be a people that says, God, you know the thoughts and the intents of my heart before I even speak to you. That one verse should make you stop before you speak to God. Because if your heart's not pure, why are you speaking? He wants you to come back when that stuff's out of your heart. and It's not self-centered, but it is Christ-centered. Amen? Amen? If you have your Bibles, turn to Isaiah, the 11th chapter. It's so important to see who wisdom is, who understanding is. It's so important that you see what it is and what it looks like because it's not, it's not a thing, it's a person. It's Jesus Himself. It says in Isaiah 11, 1 through 5, There shall come forth a rod, that's Jesus, from the stem of Jesse, because from Jesse came David, which the bloodline came through Jesus, and a branch that will grow out of His roots. The Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon Him. The Spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. His delight is in the fear of the Lord, and he shall not judge by sight of his eyes, nor decide by the hearing of his ears. But with righteousness he shall judge the poor and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. He shall strike the earth with a rod, his mouth with the breath of his lips, he shall slay the wicked. Righteousness shall be the belt of his loins, and faithfulness the belt of his waist. If you want to know what that looks like, read Revelation 19, 11 to 16. It describes what he looks like when he comes back. Because that's what Isaiah just spoke. See, the Spirit, the Father, the Word are all one. He is wisdom. He is understanding. He is all those things that I just said. Well, the merciful part of this whole thing, he says, he's not going to judge you by what he sees. Now all of you are holy and perfect and sinless, right? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Oh, no, you have. It's good. <laughs> yeah, we should smile a little bit because we're not. Imagine if God judged by His eyesight. Or even what He hears from our lips. Amen. I got one amen. amen. Yeah, because sometimes we're not so loving towards God. Sometimes we got things to say we should rather keep to ourselves. Now, none of you have ever done that. I'm the only one guilty in this house, right? <laughs> well, we know you never have, Melissa. Praise God. Hallelujah. <laughs> We're going to leave that alone. Oh, yeah. But do you see what I'm saying today, church? He is everything. He is wisdom. He is discernment. If you don't get the fact that He is everything we just read, 
You're not going to receive it. Like I said, when you got salvation, you got healing, you got wholeness, you got redemption, you got justification, you got eternal forgiveness, you're eternally redeemed. You got all that. You're going to see today, the Bible says you have all of His wisdom already. You have all of His understanding already. We just don't believe it's going to manifest because you've been taught to lean on your own understanding and on your own education. Even John during the songs today was talking about how we think we know so much. No, we don't. No, we don't. There's only one guy that knows everything who made known the end from the beginning, and that's the Lord Jesus Christ Himself, the author and finisher of your faith. So it's so important when we talk about wisdom, all the scriptures, when I started studying this, I said, man, we could just talk about that one word for about three weeks. It's in there so much in the Proverbs. And when God says, make it your dearest friend, He's telling you something what you need. You already have it. You just don't let it take over your thought process. Amen? Amen? When we talk about wisdom, we're going to talk about one of my favorite guys in the Bible. If you got your Bibles, turn to Job, the 28th chapter. Now here's a man that when you read what happened to him, when you read his response to God, it should change the way you respond to God when things don't go your way in life. None of you have ever complained, right? Never. Never complained what God was doing, right? Into you and through you and why and how come. And if you've never yelled at God, then you're probably not walking with Him very much. If you haven't argued with God, then you're, <laughs> I'm sorry, you're really not walking with Him because He's going to change you. I mean, Dean came out perfect, but the rest of us are work in progress. That's why can't you marry him? Hallelujah. Yeah, we should smile. We really should. Because God's going to change you. He doesn't save a person and leave them like that. The molding on the potter's wheel begins the day you get saved to be made into the image of the Holy Son of God. Like John was saying during worship, he walked sinless, blameless, holy. Every breath he took was holy and perfect and just and sinless. Every thought in him was holy and just. He didn't even rebuke the sinners. He healed them and said, go and sin no more. The only ones he rebuked were the religious leaders preaching their religious doctrines. Remember something? Jesus came to destroy religion. Works of the flesh trying to earn from God. He destroyed that. Amen. Yeah. You don't have to go to God to earn anything anymore. You go to Him because He's merciful and He loves you. Amen? Amen. Look what Job says. Just to read that 28th chapter when you got time. We're just going to read um, 12 and 15 and, and 28. Look what Job says about wisdom and understanding from God. But where can wisdom be found? And where is the place of understanding? Man does not, watch this, know its value. Nor is it found in the land of the living. The deep says it is not in me. The sea says it is not with me. It cannot be purchased for gold. Wow. Nor can silver be weighed for its price. And to man, he said, the fear of the Lord that is wisdom. And to depart from evil is understanding. Man does not know the value of godly wisdom. If we saw it, we're talking about seeking today, seeking God. All the things my wife and, and John said was half the sermon today. Because if you're not seeking with a pure heart, please don't waste your time. Because you're not going to get any answers, you're not going to get anywhere. Amen. It's till we humble ourselves before a holy God that He's going to answer. He so promises us. I'll move down even quicker. In James 1, 5, it says, Ask of God, and He'll give you an abundance of wisdom. But, all, but only ask in faith, because if you don't ask in faith, you're double-minded and unstable. You won't receive it from God. Amen. See, when we approach Him, we must know His integrity. Amen. That when you approach Him, you say, You said. I go to God all the time and say, You said. He said, I know what I said. Amen. <laughs> But he likes to be reminded of that word. I got him today back there during worship. I said, you said you would perform your word because of your name's sake, not mine. Amen. You said, pray my word. It's up to me to perform it, not you. You speak it. It's my job. Amen. See, so that's my confidence in God that when I speak his word, he's going to perform it. And not for us, but for his name's sake so that he be glorified in all that happens. Amen? Amen? That has to be the motive of a pure heart. God, I want everything you do in me and through me to bring glory to your holy name. Amen. To your holy name alone. Because his name stands alone and it's holy. Amen? Amen? So Job, though, for him to say that, 
Man does not know the value of godly wisdom. It says you can't find it anywhere but from God Himself. Amen. Proverbs 9, verses 10 and 11. When Job talked about the fear of the Lord as wisdom, like I said, when you look up wisdom, you start going through the Proverbs, you're going to see how many times it's mentioned. When God repeats Himself, who wrote the book over and over again, we need to pay attention. Because it's all over the Proverbs. That Proverbs 8, when you read that, when you go home today, you'll see it. Because in the bottom of that chapter of 8, it talks about how Jesus was with the Father, and wisdom was with the Father as He created everything. It's such a powerful uh, psalm, a proverb. In, in Proverbs 9, 10, and 11, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. For by me your days will be multiplied, and years of your life will be added to you. That one little verse should make you want to know His wisdom and His understanding. See, that's the life He has for all of us. He wants to multiply your years so you can be effective to declare who He is. The longer you're here on the earth, the longer you're valuable to God. Like David said, I'll do you no good from the grave, Lord. That was after he fell greatly. He fell into a great sin, a couple of them. And he said, God, forgive me, cleanse me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Restore to be the joy of my salvation. Take not thy Holy Spirit from me. David cried out from his soul. And you know what? God restored him. It was rough for a bunch of years, but God restored him. But he forgave him because David knew if he went to the God of mercy, God would forgive and heal. It is so important that we do the same today. That we go to God knowing as soon as you say, Lord, forgive me, it's over. Amen. It's over. Remember, He paid for your sins once. Don't bring it back up again. Don't bring your sins back up to God <clears throat> because He'll have no idea what you're talking about. Amen. That cross behind me, that blood behind me, that's how the Father sees us. Through the blood of the cross of His Holy Son, Jesus. He doesn't see what you see. He doesn't judge by what you see. He sees from a pure, holy, unconditional love that is pure, holy, undefiled, and pure towards you. His thoughts towards you are pure. His thoughts towards you are what? To prosper you, yes. not to harm you, to give you a hope in the future. See, God's thoughts are always good thoughts. Amen. We're just saying how good He is. It's amazing. Everybody thinks God's an enemy. No, He's your best friend. Okay. And if He's your best friend, you're going to have a good life. Because He wants you to have your years multiply. Amen. I mean, it's amazing how much when we talk about wisdom, people say, oh, i got plenty of wisdom, do you? Then why is your life a mess? <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> well, I don't have any understanding. No, because you've done it through your intellect and not through the wisdom of God. There's gonna be, you're going to see today that there's only one source of wisdom. There's only one source of understanding. Um, because unless you get it that way, you're getting worldly wisdom. I learned a lot of wisdom in the streets. You know what I learned? I don't want to live that way. Amen. I don't want nothing to do with that old person. I thank God He keeps it crucified every day because without His help it wouldn't be. Amen. Yeah. Amen is right because it's finished. It's so important today. We get a lot of something. It's so important today that you give up on your thought process. It needs to be replaced with His thoughts, His wisdom, His understanding, His discernment. Amen. He has shown me the days that we're living in it bothers me so much because I saw it coming almost when, from the day I got saved for the first couple of years to show me what was coming on the earth. If people don't have godly sorrow and godly repentance, it produces repentance which leads to salvation. So many people think they're so smart and they got it all together. Well, let me tell you something. When I got that vision of the hourglass when we were praying in here Friday night and time is running out, actually Valerie posted something about the hourglass of time on her Facebook page the other day. I went, oh, that was confirmation. I want to watch God take this big hourglass and he turned it. And he said, time is running out. I never saw that before, but that came up in the Spirit when we were praying Friday night. We need to make the most of our time as children of Almighty God. Amen? Amen. But you can't do it on your own. Stop thinking you're smart. Let God's brain take over your brain. You'll, be, you'll have a lot better life. Yeah. Proverbs 2, 1 through 6. So important we see today for wisdom be talked about so much in the Proverbs. Who had the most wisdom of any man ever on the earth in the history of humanity? Solomon. It's a shame he didn't practice what he preached. God told him to do one thing, just like Adam and Eve. Don't bring them foreign women into your life 
with their foreign gods. God told them one thing. Like Adam and Eve, don't eat the apple. That worked well. So when God says don't, He means something. It's so important today that you see what's going on. When we watched that movie last night, it tore my heart out. But it's real. It's happening. Our job is to pray for those children. To pray for God's righteousness to come upon the heads that are hurting these children. It's your job to intercede for those kids. Amen? Amen? They're a gift from God. And they're innocent. I love the statement in that. God's children are not for sale. They're not for sale. This school system we have in America, they've stolen our kids. We need to take it back in the name of Jesus. Amen. I'm so glad parents are getting angry finding what's being happening to their children. This country's going to find out that we're not going to bow to them in their Marxist ways. We're going to rise up in the name of Jesus and take our country back. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. I'm all fired up. Thank you, Lord. Proverbs 2. When God uses the word if, He's telling us something. It's one of the most powerful words in the Bible. He always says, if you'll obey. If you will follow. If you will do what you're commanded. That word if, two little letters. But it's two of the two most powerful letters in the Bible. Look what it says. My son, if you receive my words and treasure my commands within you, so that you incline your ear to wisdom, apply your heart to understanding. Yes, if you cry out for discernment, lift up your voice for understanding, Here's that word again. If you seek her as silver, search for her as for hidden treasures, then you will understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. For the Lord, watch this, look at the promise of God to you today. For the Lord gives wisdom, and from His mouth comes knowledge and understanding. There's that word seeking again with a pure heart. I'm telling you something, the church needs to purify its heart with fire. Amen. No, we really do because our love, our love relationship with Jesus is the most important thing. I'm sorry, I don't, yeah. if you got married kids, grandkids, great grandkids, they don't come first. Jesus does. I'm not putting anybody down. I'm just saying your pure love, His love for you is pure. We need to have our hearts pure so it's pure love for God. And with that, He's going to cleanse your hearts. We don't realize what's in our heart until God shows us. And it's so important, the things even I've been through personally for God to clean my heart and stuff. It's amazing He cleans it and then stuff gets back in. Amen. Now praise God, none of that's happened to you. No. Right, Betsy? <laughs> see, it's so important we be honest with ourselves today, church. Because until you seek Him with a pure heart, until you make His wisdom and understanding the most important thing in your life, Everything else isn't going to work out for you because you're going to go out there in your humanness and your human thinking and your human judgments and you're going to try and figure things out on your own. If mankind could figure things out on his own, Jesus wouldn't have come. If mankind could have sacrificed animals for their sins, a sinless lamb wouldn't have had to come. The whole new covenant is about you finally laying your life down so his life can take you over. And all your hope gets put in Christ alone and in nothing else. See, that's wisdom. See, after so many years with the Lord, I realized something. I really can't do anything that's good and holy unless He's helping me. Because left to ourselves, He's my keeper. Yeah. I really count on God to be my keeper. Amen. We, must, we must get, Lord, I count on you. And when you get to that place of weakness, we prayed for a woman the other day, my wife and I, one of our neighbors, and I said, stop, stop beating yourself up. You've been trying to overcome things on your own. You can. That's why things just went south. But we prayed with her. She cried. It was a blessing. The Lord touched her. It was beautiful. I finally said, I said, you got to look in the mirror and forgive yourself. I, I, I'm, hey, listen, none of you are completely innocent every day. Yeah. Well, yeah, smile. Smile, church. It's okay. It's okay to admit you don't get it right every day. You have a perfect God that lives within you. You have a perfect God that lives within you. You're in the perfection process. Stop, the, stop putting expectations in you that you can't live up to. You cannot and will not. You know what? God won't even allow you. Because <laughs> now you're going to go like that. Oh man, look what I just did. No. Now none of you ever patted yourself on the back. I didn't even get an amen. Well, you were there at the beginning. Yeah, so we, we know you got it all together, brother. <laughs> but do you see what I'm saying? 
Even Matthew 6, 33, it says, seek, him, seek His kingdom and His righteousness first. All things will be added unto you. See, that's another word, seeking. It's all through the Old and the New Covenant. Seeking God, seeking His will, seeking His desires for you. But do it with a pure heart, church. If you go to God and you're all self-centered prayers, don't even expect an answer back. Amen. Because He's really not obligated. Amen. Because if you're making life about you and not about, about Him, then I'm, I'm sorry, your heart's not pure. Amen. This is, the, this is what the Gospel says, not me. It's so important today if we really get a hold of this. This is another proverb. Proverbs 3, 13 to 15. When you see what wisdom does for you, Man, it should make your heart happy. Remember, in Proverbs, a merry heart is good medicine. Proverbs 3, 13 to 15. Happy is the man who finds wisdom. See? Seek that wisdom, church. And the man who gains understanding. Watch this. For her proceeds are better than the profits of silver, and her gain than fine gold. She is more precious than rubies, and all the things you may desire cannot compare with her. You know why so many Christians get in trouble? They go out and do a lot of business deals. They want to make a success of their life. But they don't ask for the godly wisdom to do it. Amen. When I was a heathen, I went into business for myself. I didn't have godly wisdom. I had street wisdom, which was good and bad. But I made so many mistakes those first couple of years when I had my own first couple of trucks. I'll tell you what. That was costly mistakes. Because I didn't have godly wisdom. I didn't plan well. He says, no, before you do something, consider the cost. I didn't have any of that working in me because I didn't have God working in me. See what I'm saying? I made so many mistakes because I didn't have God leading me. I was going to do everything. I was the man. I, I can do this. I'm going yeah, I got this. I got my choice. I'm going to make money. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to. That word I'm going to was my whole vocabulary. Then I met Jesus. <laughs> then I met Jesus. <laughs> I said, I'm not the smartest pumpkin in the patch down here, am I, Lord? <laughs> he says, well, that's what humans do without me. That's why the hourglass is running out. I'm telling you something. The correction on humanity is here. And it's going to be swift. It's going to be sincere. It's, it's, I, I just see it coming. When God breathes, what comes out of His mouth? Fire. The sword, which is the Word of God. Everybody thinks there's a final judgment, and there is. Well, let me tell you something. The world's already being judged by what? The Word. It says, my Word will judge you. Now, there's a final wrath to come. That's the eternal judgment. But the hourglass is running out on people. It's about time the church commit itself to having a purified heart before God that we realize the life of Christ, His wisdom, His understanding, His discernment. It says it's better than the profits of silver. It's more precious than rubies. It's better than fine gold. Everybody's investing in gold and rubies and silver. Silver ain't changed much in the last 50 years its prices. It goes up and down about $2 up, $2 down. Gold goes up and down. Let me tell you something. Gold ain't going to do you no good when there's no food to buy. That's right, preacher. You better have faith in God to multiply everything. Amen? Mm -hmm. I just know God said, I'm going to take care of you. I don't care what's going on in the world. You're mine. As surely as I brought manna from heaven to feed my children Israel, I'll bring manna from heaven to feed you. See, I have no doubts what God can do. I've watched Him do stuff for 32 years. I'm telling you something. He is faithful. He is good. He is true. He is just. He is the Word. And what He says will be done. In the name of Jesus, mm. hallelujah. Amen. Amen. When I say there's one source for all the wisdom and knowledge of God, if you have your Bibles, turn to Colossians, the second chapter. That's why I seek the wisdom of the world less than I ever have. I know what's going on. The Holy Spirit shows us. I seek God for understanding on what to do. Even what we do in here, I always ask God, what do we do first? What do we need? What needs to happen? You know, I got pictures and stuff, and he says, no, it's not time yet. I'm waiting on God to show me exactly what to do. But when he tells me to do something, I'm up, put my shoes on, I'm out the door. Because I know there's a perfect time for everything. I know not to get ahead of God because I've done that many times, and then he has to fix my mess. And then he has a little discussion with me. <laughs> he has a correction, it's called correction counseling by the Holy Ghost. Amen. Praise God, all of you don't have to go through that. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, boy. Let me tell you something, church. You've got to learn to do it. He's taught me best out of 32 years. Look in the mirror sometimes just laugh at myself. 
Yeah, that worked well, didn't it? He said, well, you should have sought me first. It would have worked a lot better. <laughs> but when you go back and study wisdom in the Proverbs, you read that eighth one, and I'm telling you, church, you're going to see how much God is letting you know you need it. You need it. You can't do without it. He said, he said it's, make it your dearest friend. It's more precious. It's priceless. It can't be bought. It can only come from the King of Kings. Colossians, the second chapter, verses 2 to 3. That their hearts may be encouraged, knit together in love, and attaining to all the riches of the full assurance of understanding, to the knowledge of the mystery of God, both of the Father and of Christ, in whom are, watch this, are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Wow! Mm. How much of it? All. Oh. All. It's treasures. There's treasures in godly wisdom. I'm telling you, if somebody wasn't saved and they ran their business by the book of Proverbs, they'd be a billionaire. Yeah. They'd be so successful, maybe not a billionaire, but they'd be a millionaire. If they did what Proverbs says, Pray a worker worthy of their, of, the, of, their, of their labor, what they're doing for you, you pay them right, um, treat each other right, don't get unjust gain, don't, don't use people for, to, to make money, all those things he tells you to do, to treat kindly, all that stuff he teaches us about running a business. That's why the book of Proverbs, I'm telling you something, I knew people that were pure heathens, but they did it this way. Listen to any motivational speaker. That make millions off of people that are so insecure they got to go get wisdom from some guy standing in a shirt and tie. Yeah. Let me tell you something. Read Proverbs. Because every motivational speaker, even that guy Roberts for years made millions of dollars. Let's do a lot of his stuff. You know where it comes out of? The book of Proverbs. Wow. They take it right out of the Bible. They don't believe in God, but they use the Bible. The problem is their money's going to go to hell with them if they don't get saved. Unjust gain is still an abomination to the Lord. So they may have used his word, but they don't know him. And the Bible warns us about that. Amen, church? Amen. When I say there's one source, even Deborah put it in the bulletin about 1 Corinthians, the second chapter. Read that. It's so important, 6 to 16. I'm just going to read verse 10. Remember what it says? Seek those hidden treasures of God. Watch what it says in verse 10. 1 Corinthians 2. It says, But God has revealed them to us through his Spirit. For the Spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. When we talk about hidden treasures, it's in the Bible. That's why when you read the words of God, I want to see the hidden treasures of your word. Teach me something. Show me something as I seek you. My heart is open to your word and to your spirit to teach me. That's how we get wisdom. You don't get there's no other source of wisdom. Yeah, we learn wisdom, what we don't want to do when we make mistakes out in the world. We stub our toe, we bang our head, but God will fix it. God will fix it. Amen. Yeah, thank you. We've all fallen short of God's glory. We've all made our own way some days. Yes, you have. It's even better than that. Watch what the Spirit does in Daniel 2, in verses 21 to 22. When I talk about this wisdom, like I said, it's all over the Bible, church. And you need to go to God with a pure heart and say, God, I can't exist on this earth without your wisdom and your understanding and your discernment of things. You really are going to make a mess in life if you don't have it. Amen? Amen. Look what he said. Look what Daniel says. And he changes the times and the seasons. He removes kings and raises up kings. I thank you. That's going to happen now in the name of Jesus. Watch. He gives wisdom to the wise. Knowledge to those who have understanding. He reveals deep and secret things. He knows what's in the darkness and light dwells in Him. Over and over, you're to seek wisdom and understanding from God. Yeah. Amen. It has to be a priority, you know, especially the days you're coming in. Because out there, there's so many slick willies trying to con you out of something. To all these fraud things that are going on. It's amazing what's going on in the world. Um, we see it every day. We go through it every day. My little debit card got hacked. <laughs> I got an alert on my phone this morning. Somebody tried to charge $9.99. Was this you? No. Click. I said, thank you, Jesus. Because we don't use it much, so if something shows up weird, the bank goes, well, wait a minute. Within 60 seconds, it was stopped. Nothing happened. Okay, finally sent you another card. But do you see what I'm saying? That's what we're up against out there. 
even on the computer, every time you turn it on, they're warning you, look out for things. Don't, don't sign up for anything. Look out what you're doing on the computer. Look out what you're doing on your phone. Amen. Because they've got technology today so far. They said that AI is already wreaking havoc on people's phones and on their computers. So don't sign up for it. Don't do it. Don't mess with it. I got a computer genius that runs our website, and he says this stuff is dangerous. This is a man that has an IQ off the charts. He knows more about computers and internet and everything else than probably most people on the planet. But he said it's dangerous what they're doing. The only thing I keep getting is war games that movie. They've already started something that they can't control. It's learning by itself. It's doing things on its own. God showed me when I was a baby Christian, I was in a computer class for a, for a couple of weeks, and even the teacher said it's going to get dangerous down the road what computers can do. That was 30 years ago, 29 years ago he said that. He said it's going to get dangerous and you better be careful. See, so God's warning us. Wisdom says, okay, don't get involved with stuff I don't know. When I got computer issues, I call the man that knows on the phone. <laughs> Yo, what's going on with this? What do I do? How do I do it? Should I do it? And he knows the answer as soon as I call him. See, God will bring you the people that have the wisdom and the discernment that we don't have. That's why when we come together, we pray as one. It's awesome what starts to manifest in here, like John preaching part of the sermon and Terry preaching part of the sermon. It's the same Holy Ghost. What a blessing that is when they were speaking stuff that was on this paper up here that I've studied for a couple days. It means we're all hearing from God, and that's important. We need each other. You pray in part, you prophesy in part, when you come together, it all comes together in one big picture. That's how important all of you are in the kingdom of God. None of us can stand alone. None of us can. We're not strong enough. When I am weak, then I am strong. Because in my weakness, His strength will be manifest. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. This last one in Ephesians 1. We've gone over this before, but it was like, I had about 20 scriptures last night. It's 15 to 23. We're just going to read 17 to 22, right there, 23. He says, you pray this over them tomorrow. I had a lot of scriptures on wisdom still, sitting on my desk at 11.15 last night. And he just said, no, no, no. He said, you put this down because I was going to do it originally. But he says, I, I want you to save this for last. When I was typing, I was, and he says, you pray this over them. Remember something, when you speak the word of God over somebody, it's the living water. Amen. And it washes over you. Amen. And it penetrates your thoughts and your body and your mind. He said, you pray them over them, and I'm going to water them with the word tomorrow. Amen. God is so good. Amen. If we ever got a taste of a little bit how much he loves us, how much he cares for us, and how much this word can do in you and through you. If we just cherish this word with a pure heart, it would transform you within seconds. Because now you're in love with the one who died for you. Who loves you more than you'll ever know until you get to heaven. We'll never get the fullness of it. Here we can. Because we're still in a human suit. But he told me, he says, you're going to know, because I've been to heaven. Yeah. And then you're going to see how much you're really loved. Because down here, I don't think we can really mentally and emotionally comprehend the depth of the one who came. Like John said, who walked sinless and holy for us. So that he could be nailed to that cross. So you could live eternally with him. Oh, man. It also says in Timothy, the word, we get regenerated by the word. We get renewed. We get made new by it. So as God prays this word over you today by the Holy Spirit, I pray that the washing of your heart, your mind, your soul, just get filled with the presence of God like you've never known. Because He's what matters in here. Yes. This ministry's always been about Jesus. It'll always be about Jesus. Always, because hes that's what life is. Life is Jesus. Amen? Amen. 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 Ephesians 1, 17-22. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom, revelation in the knowledge of Him, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of His calling, 
What are the riches of the glory of His inheritance in the saints? What is the exceeding greatness of His power towards us who believe? According to the workings of His mighty power, which He worked in Christ when He raised Him from the dead and seated Him in His right hand in heavenly places, far above all principality and power, might and dominion, every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in that which is to come, he put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the church, which is his body. The fullness of him who fills all in all. Wow. When he said, raise Jesus from the dead, Ephesians 2, 6, we were raised up together, made us to sit in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, far above all principalities and powers. When you meditate on that, you put your name in there. It says that that he, that he give, put your name in there where it says give the spirit of wisdom and revelation knowledge of him and his understanding. I'm telling you church, you meditate on that verse. You thank him that you are filled with the spirit of his wisdom and revelation knowledge and understanding of him, his kingdom, and why you are here and the hope of your calling. And when you pray that and you believe that and you put your name in that book. Some I learned a long time ago, some of the scriptures said, now put your name there. He says, Dennis will prosper in all things, even under my health, even as my soul prospers. Dennis will be satisfied with a long life, then he will behold my salvation. I started to learn to put my name in certain scriptures. He says, because it's written to you. It's written to all of everybody who believes. <clears throat> and everybody who's going to believe, but he says, put your name in there. Make this personal. Amen. Yeah, make these promises personal to you. It's a personal love letter to us. Mm. Sealed with his own blood. That's why we need his wisdom and, and discernment and revelation knowledge of his will and the hope of our calling. When you're going to walk around trying to figure stuff out, you can. You can on your own. Yeah, you're talented. Lots of people died. Lots of skills. I made a mess of everything I ever did in life before Jesus. Amen. BC was some rough years. <laughs> I got, I got, and BC no longer exists because that was before Christ. That guy's not here anymore. He's not welcome here anymore. But after Christ, after His death and resurrection, is when all our lives began. So now, like I said, when you keep reading these scriptures about wisdom, I'm telling you, church, go home, read some of these Proverbs, study this out. When God starts repeating Himself over and over and over again on a certain subject, we need to be paying if we hear His Word. Proverbs 4, if. We meditate on His Word and obey it. And we, let, we incline our ear to it. It will be, it will be, if, it will be health to our flesh, strength to our bones. I don't know about the rest of you, but I gave up on being strong a long time ago because I realized every time I try and be strong and be a conqueror or something like else, the conqueror takes the naps and lets me, let, lets me struggle to show me I need His strength and wisdom in everything that I do. I need His strength and His wisdom in everything I do. Amen. I need His discernment of things so I know what to avoid and what not to get involved in. And right now, He's telling me, be careful of everything and anything out there. If it sounds too good, it smells too good, you better look out. Because it's the devil trying to seduce you. Amen. Yeah, amen is right. It's finished, church. God is faithful. He can't deny Himself. He can't ever fail you. He doesn't know how. But I'm here to tell you today, stop trying to figure life out on your own. Stop making all your grandiose plans because they will come to nothing if God hasn't ordained it. You know how many people go out and say, I'm going to go do this for God and they make a complete mess. I said, did you ask God first? Well, no, it's godly what I'm doing. I said, no, 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 that's not what I said. Lots of, I did lots of godly stuff when I was first saved and half it was a mess because he didn't tell me to go do it. I just thought I was supposed to. Because you hear everybody telling you what you have to do as a Christian. He said, I'll be down with me. He says, who did I say to pick up your cross and to do what from that point on? Follow you and be your disciple. He said, stop with listening to all these voices. Stop listening to all the voices. There's one voice of the shepherd that we need to hear every day. Amen? So let me tell you something, church. The first step of you getting God's wisdom is a pure heart. Because then you want godly wisdom for godly purposes, not your own. And He'll give it to you abundantly, to overflowing 
if you really trust Him. Amen? Because I'm telling you something, in the days you're coming in, if you don't have godly wisdom and godly discernment, you're going to be deceived. You're going to get yourself in a lot of trouble. And I'm telling you something, as God is my witness, I've seen what's coming on this earth. I don't like it. It's going to get ugly. It's going to get darker. But the light's going to shine because you can't put out His light. You can't put out His fire. He's a consuming fire. And He lives within us. And when he breathes the fire, heaven's going to come down on unrighteousness. All these people living in darkness, they're going to see a great light. But you know what? For a lot of them, it's going to be too late. The rod is coming. Amen. The rod is coming. Amen. Our job is to be a beacon of light to this world that needs it so bad. They need Jesus right now more than ever before. And I'm telling you, if you've got a pure heart, you're going to be in love with Jesus. Because they're going to know it when you talk to them. When you leave here today, if you go somewhere, you go out to eat, you go do something, you go to the store, they're going to know you know Jesus by how you talk to them. Amen. I went shopping the other day for Wal at Walmart to get us some stuff for the ministry. This woman at that red shoe was having a day. I'm watching. She was supposed to have a break. And they said, well, it'll take some more people. So they put me in line. I, I got up to her because the people in front of her, it was... I took one look at her, I had my Jesus shirt on, answered the call, and I said, it's going to be okay. God is good. And she just looked at me. You know when I left that register, you know what she said? Come back and see me. She's probably 70 years old, working hard, they didn't even give her a break and she needed one. I almost told the girl to come by the supervisor, I says, you got some nerve, this woman needs a break. But because we, sh we get to share the kindness and the love of Jesus, she says, come back see me again. <laughs> see how much you can affect people? Be observant of people. Be discerning. Don't just stand there like you're the only one in the store. There's other people that need you. They need us. I come home, I, my heart was so happy. I said, boy, you touched her today. That was really good. And it took, what, five minutes? That's all. But it changed her whole countenance to know that somebody cares. See, because if you don't care, they're left alone. They suffer. It takes you a couple seconds of your life to change somebody's whole countenance for the day because you showed them the kindness, the goodness we just sang about today of God. That's how effective we can be, church. But allow God to purify your heart today. Because if you leave here today and you leave this door looking what you can do for yourself today, then you've missed who Jesus is and why he died. We're his representation down here. We're his eyes. We're his ears. We're his mouthpiece. We're his hands. We're his feet. We're the carrier of his glory and his power. And it's time we sought him and we seek him like we've never known with all our heart so that we can be those vessels. So when we leave here today, everywhere we go, God manifests himself through us in Jesus' name. Father, we humbly come before your throne because we know we can only come because of your Holy Son, Jesus. The sinless Lamb that took the wrath of you, Father. Your wrath of sin was put on your Son, Jesus. One that was sinless, innocent, and had never done wrong. But yet He paid a price which all of humanity could never pay. You gave us the gift of salvation. You said it's a gift by those who believe, by grace and faith in you. So, Fathers, we surrender our hearts to you today. We thank you. You're purifying our hearts. So as we come to you and lift up holy hands, we've been washed in the blood of Jesus, sealed with your Holy Spirit. Even in Isaiah 11, all that Jesus is, the fullness of Jesus. In, in, uh, in Colossians, that second chapter, all that you are, all your wisdom, all your knowledge, all your power, all your glory, it's already been filled up in us, O oh God. But I thank you as we come to have more of you and less of us. Just cleanse our hearts today, Father. Cleanse it of anything that you did not. If there's one little root even left, burn it out with the Holy Spirit. Do that surgery that can only be made, it says, not by hands, but by your Spirit. The sword of the Spirit, which is sharper than a two-edged sword. Cut it out, God. Cut anything out of us that's not of you this day. So then when we leave here today, people see that we've been transformed into brand new creations in the likeness of Almighty God. 
We thank you, Lord, for this time today. We thank you for the rest of the day to worship you and praise you. I just pray such a blessing of your grace, of your peace, to rest upon everybody in here right now. And I thank you that today we receive spiritual, mental, emotional, physical, financial healings and wholeness, that blessed life that you've promised through your Holy Son. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. And God is good. And He's always good. And He's always going to be a good God. Amen? Amen. 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 Hallelujah, Jesus.